Hi there folks, it's Gogolman for back here again for another video, and you might notice that I'm using this camera again. I haven't used it in quite a little while since I decided to um, uh, go back to doing the old way of making videos. Um, but of course, this is one of the videos that I mentioned a little while ago that I said, I might have mentioned it a little while ago, I might have not, who knows. Um, but this video is specific regarding what I'm doing, as you can probably tell by the title below. Um, this is pretty much the long-awaited tour of the room that I am currently living in at this moment. Um, I've been meaning to get around to it, but I just haven't really had the time, and at the moment, uh, since coming back from Auto Assembly, things have happened that have made me very, bu um, very busy to really make me not do any videos, so sorry about that. Um, so, let's see, I think the best way to really start this off is, this is pretty much a, you can pretty much see where I'm standing at the moment. I'm standing in what looks like an archway in which there's a door behind me, and you might notice that the uh, the lighting in this particular part of my room is very, very bad, because there's no light in it at all, which is kind of why the shadow is a little bit casting off. Um, so, I think where would be the best place to start giving this uh, tour of my room? Well, this really seems like the best place to really start, because I'm going to just um, get this a little bit out of the way, because it's echoing a little bit. Um, so, let's see, this area really isn't anything special, it's just the, the entrance to my bedroom, just getting away from my face a little bit. And this particular side, hang on a second, let me just show you, is really where a lot of the things that I have hanged are. There's, um, well, these two pictures, of course, I got from previous auto-assemblies, of course, are signed pictures of Ian James Collette, the voice of Cheetor from Beast Wars, and Greg Berger, who everyone knows is the voice of Grimlock. And, of course, there's the calendar of Japanese Wood Blocks, which is a very nice calendar. And actually, it's something different for a change, because normally, all the time, I always seem to have calendars of a lot of um, uh, nerdy variety sort of things, mostly Transformers, but I seem to have really given up from that a little bit and just moved on from that. And down below, of course, there's a, there's a signed picture of David Kay, who's best known for playing Megatron from Beast Wars. And I got that back in 2006. And, of course, at the bottom, there's a signed card by Neil Kaplan that I got signed from A2005. That's going way back. And here, actually, is something very different. This is actually a signed... It's an autograph from Larry Kenny, the voice of Lionel from Thundercats, who, many years ago, he actually... Um, we spoke a little while ago. We spoke ages ago. And he was actually kind enough to remember, uh, to remember me and remember my birthday back then. So that's, yeah, that's, uh, this pretty much is the area where my calendar, some things signed by several voice actors are, and that's really all there is to it. And over here, which pretty much leading into my bedroom, is the shelf where the majority of my Bionicle figures are normally kept, because these figures really haven't really, um, stood out in the light as of, as of late since moving into this room, because previously in my old room, they were positioned in a much more uh, visible area, but here they're just kind of huddled away in this mirror area. Well, it, it is a mirror until we get around to it. And this down below really is where all my video games are kept, so I'm going to do separate videos for each of these. So we'll get round to, I'll get round to doing collection videos of each and every one of these boxes containing all my video games. And here, actually going into the room properly now, is really where the, where the entire collection of all of my Transformers are. Um, what can I say about this, this area as of this moment? Well, since moving into this new room, I wanted to really have something that really would make this, uh, make my Transformers stand out a little bit more. So, of course, thanks to the lovely Ikea, um, able to provide me some nice furniture, I was lucky enough to get these glass cabinets, because it's always nice whenever, um, whenever collectors go through a great deal of trouble to, uh, display the collections nicely of anything. It doesn't necessarily have to be Transformers, but, um, of course, these shelves here, which I believe are called, um, uh, Deltovs, uh, any advice to any people out there who are just starting collecting and want to display the collection in a much more reasonable way? Um, a reasonable and a much more smarter way. This is the best way to do it. Deltovs, you can't go wrong with, so highly recommending. I'm highly recommending these. Um, so, where would be the best place to start with the, uh, the, the whole collection? Well, I think the best place to start is right at the top, because this is where the, um, where some of the stuff that doesn't fit into these shelves normally goes. At the back here, you'll see the trailer for G2 Laser Rod Prime and G1 Optimus Prime. And in the middle, of course, is 
G1 Skullgren. And of course, on the sides of Skullgren, you have Henke and Classics Megatron, positioned quite nicely because I haven't got anywhere, for the, uh, anywhere else for these two figures to go. And here is the this, which of course was part of the G1 Optimus Prime, which is the voice. Hang on. It's the it's the uh, Autobot logo that plays um, many Optimus Prime voices. Which you, when, when if you press the top of it, it plays over and over again, over and over again. And of course, in the middle, there's Armada Unicron, which is very nice. And and on both sides of him is um, uh, Mighty Mugs Megatron and Optimus Prime. And here, which I was originally going to put these boxes up in the attic, but here these actually look quite nice. Are the boxes of the things that I bought from Auto Assembly, and at the back there's um, a box from Prime Dark Steel, which is very nice. And now moving on to the pièce de résistance of the collection itself. Here we go right from the very beginning, which of course here is the G1 shelf itself. Now I haven't really got that many G1 figures, so I really don't know what to highlight from this particular area, except from the fact that here is where, like I said, most of, them, well, most of the G1 figures are kept. Um, I have a lot of Autobots, as you can probably already tell, a lot of Autobots and not that many Decepticons. The only real Decepticons in this G1 shelf as it is are Soundwave at the front and Megatron huddled right at the back between Power Mars, Optimus Prime, Inferno and Jetfire. So, yeah, the G1 collection is very, very small. And on here, this side right here, are the classics Decepticons, including pretty much the, um, some of the things that I've had over the years. Um, the two, well, the three recent, oh, hang on, one, two, three, yeah, three recent things I bought from AA this year. Uh, Blitzwing, Bludgeon, and I know the, Blit, uh, I know the um, Bludgeon is a Revenge of the Fallen, but to me he feels like a classics figure. I'll get around to that when I review him, but anyway. Um, yeah, Bludgeon, and of course, Fall Cybertron Shockwave. So, yeah. Oh, and Thundercracker as well. So that's, that makes four, not three. So that pretty much is the Classics Decepticon shelf right there, which is quite nice. Down here is the Beast Wars section. The only Beast anything in this whole area of my collection. Which, of course, you have the Maximals all right there. Huddled, squashed together, just like that. And over here are the Predacons, which... Missing... Uh, I have a couple of gaps at the front, which I probably will fill down the line, if I can find some good figures in the, in the, well, not, well, sorry, not, not all good figures, because, um, the majority of the Beast Wars figures has some good and bad figures, um, mostly being Transmetals and Fusors, being the good ones, um, so I, got, I will probably try and find some good figures in those series to fill these little gaps right here, but, yeah, pretty much the Predacon shelf area is mostly quite small, so, yeah, and down here, of course, continuing on, we have the Classics line. Again, more Classics Autobots. Well, yeah, this is actually the Classics Autobots section. This whole area right here is Classics Autobots, even though back here we have... Um, our, hang on, I'm not sure if you can see it or not. The light's getting so bad. Okay, here we go. Um, RD Optimus Prime and RD Ultra Magnus, which are positioned quite nicely in between a lot of Classics Autobots. And, of course, back here, again, more Classics Autobots with Cybertron, Vector Prime, and Alternative Prowl at the back. And going down here is really where I keep a lot of the animated and Prime figures, which have nowhere else to go, which is kind of a shame. Um, but nonetheless, they, they kind of look nice crammed together at least, because it really it separates the whole um, feel between both lines, I think. And again, Decepticons. I need more Decepticons. For some reason, I don't, I don't seem to have that many Decepticons. Um, but yeah, pretty much the Decepticon, the, uh, the classic Decepticon shelf, the second one, which hasn't really got that many, but this is pretty much all I can really fit in at this point. So, there you go, that's pretty much the, uh, the entire setup of my collection as it is, and I'm not sure if you can see it very clearly, because it's reflecting really, really badly, I'm shooting this during the daytime, depending on when you're watching this, but the backdrop, of course, are pictures from Auto Assembly 2000, and, uh, well, posters I got from Auto Assembly 2012, as well as a couple of pages ripped out from magazine, from comics that I have, which actually make quite good backdrops. They're quite good posters to have for backgrounds of um, of toys. And not sure if you can see properly enough, but this here 
was actually from a London meet that I got from quite a while ago, which has Impacto, and I don't know the name of this character, anybody who reads IDW will probably know, but I just like the picture, that was actually drawn by um, Jamie, I can't, I can't think of his name, um, he, I'm subscribed to him, you'll, you'll probably know who he is if you've seen his art, but he's a really talented artist, he needs to have a professional career in art, just saying. Anyway, so that's pretty much the whole collection, as over the years, it has grown quite, quite large, as you can probably already see, so that's really, uh, yeah, that's the whole collection in all of its entirety. I'm actually quite proud of this whole setup. It actually looks much smarter than the previous setup that I had ages and ages ago. And there's a mirror, of course. There's me, of course. And here really isn't anything all that special. This is pretty much the uh, the other backdrop in which you see me in the videos that I do. But now it's actually much better because these posters that I have of Heavy Metal, a really great film, and Terminator, a, a really good film. Um, originally these posters were, I had them white tacked to the wall. And the problem with having them, well, with, having, with having posters or anything white tacked on the wall, or blue tacked on the wall, is that they can fall down all the time, and that, and that kept happening, happening to me all the time in a lot of videos that I do. Well, well, not a lot of videos that I do, but um, just a lot of the times, and probably even during when I sleep as well, because these things will often fall down, and I have to put them back up, and then they all fall down, and then put them back up again. So these actually look much better in frames. But keeping in mind this area as well, where the posters in between the four Frankfurt set of paintings, which I'll get onto in a minute, um, you'll see the, uh, these posters change an awful lot. They won't. They won't always stay the same. I mentioned that a little while ago that um, that this area where the posters are kept will change an awful lot. So you'll you'll see different you'll see different posters throughout the course of my videos. And here. Really, if there's one thing that I'll say right now, I am a huge Frank Fazetta fan. I love his artwork. It's a shame that he's no longer with us, but the man really knew how to capture the essence of fantasy artwork, and he does that so well here. Um, Conan painting, and of course, the Death Dealer painting, which I really like. These two as well, which I really can't remember the names of, but they're two fantastic pieces of work. Um... And, and honestly, this really isn't enough. The, uh, these aren't the only Frank Rosetta. The, these aren't the only Frank Rosetta A4 pieces of work that I've got that I managed to purchase over the years. Um, at the top, which really is the other figures that I own, um, at the back here, these posters by Frank Rosetta, which they are all a, which they are all on A4 paper. Um, uh, with the exception of that one painting at the very end, which of course is a painting by the late Mobius, aka oh, sorry, as um the late Jean Girard, otherwise known as Mobius, which is a robot minotaur, which is actually really cool. These posters right here are all Frank Rosetta, so they are all really gorgeous. And these posters as well act as a very good a uh, very good backdrop for this whole area right here, which are, which is pretty much the majority of the non Transformers figures that I have. Aside from being a Transformers fan, I do like to collect other figures. I'm not really much of a collector anymore, but these figures I love absolutely. So, let's see what we got here. Nothing really special except for the fact that I have a lot of Spawn. I do love Spawn a lot. Um, a lot of video... Well, let's see. Two video game um, figures. You see one of the Big Daddies from Bioshock, as well as Jubei Yagyu from Onimusha 2. Um, of course... From a lot of, uh, let's see, we have, okay, well, uh, I have a few McFarlane Dragons, which are very nice to look at. Um, what else? Uh, like I said, a lot of, uh, this shelf is mostly where I keep a lot of the McFarlane and NECA toys. The, um, those two brands of figures, I really do like a lot. So this is pretty much where I can really fit those figures. Originally, I had those um, these figures crammed into what into a filing cabinet, into, well, not a filing cabinet, but a, uh, a glass cabinet where I kept most of my comics. Which it felt awkward because I had to keep taking the com I had to keep I had to keep taking the figures out and then putting the comics back and repeating that process over and over again. Which it really doesn't help. So this is a much more neater arrangement and a much more nicer display. So that's pretty much the shelf right there. Over here. A tree mug, well, the the, the infamous um, mug tree with a collective assortment of mugs, which is uh, nothing really all that special. 
a dream catcher, which is very nice to have. So the bed, really nothing more special. Um, a map of Hyboria, which is actually from the video game Age of I don't know if you can see or not. Age of Conan, which I actually had this. F I actually recently, I actually recently just got this framed, and it looks actually much. Oh, as you can see or not, the lighting in this is so bad. Um, it looks better framed, honestly, when you when you think about it. And here is, of course, getting onto the light again. A sword that I recently put, which I've not recently purchased, but this um, I've had this for quite a little while. It's a gorgeous sword, and here. Nothing really that special except it's just a, a, um, a bedside table and I'm current the book that I'm currently reading which is ABC Warriors and here um, Well, actually no, sorry. I'm continuing onward um, Incense I have a lot of incense uh, Cup where I have a lot of pencils and pens and a makeup brush and down here is really an interesting area because these two figures right here of um of these two, of Cosmic Angela and of course Angela, these two figures I actually got from uh, Corey Sports War Three, a oh, great reviewer. Um, I didn't want to open these, and the reason I didn't want to open these is because these two figures are very, very rare. They're from the '90s, and they are of um, that era in which McFarlane Toys was just starting out. So um, it's it feels much nicer to have these framed, honestly. I don't. I didn't want to destroy the collectors. Um, their collectors' value because taking. I know that a lot of people have very different opinions on when it comes to toys, but these two figures, I just wanted to keep them in their packaging for various different reasons. So there you go. And over here, which is mostly a lot of empty shelves, is where I keep a lot of my CDs. So, um, Megadeth, Jimmy Brothers, um, Devil Driver, Nickelback, Blind Guardian, Disturbed, Tool, is Posthumous, um, Parts of the Fall. Uh, Halloween, a lot of various CDs, and th okay, just just saying right now, just before we can move on to the other part of my room, this area right here, I'm gonna do a separate video because uh, a separate video for because this shelf is where I keep most of my comics, and I don't want to really showcase every single one of them until I get to a separate video. So we'll uh, I'll just skip past that, but that's pretty much the the shelf of comics which I'll do an individual uh, I'll do a separate video for when we come around to it. And here, which really is the only area where I can keep more figures, really, are the the four Revoltech figures I own. Revoltech Starscream that I got from Bob Honkster, um, the YF-19 from Macross Plus, the YF-21, and the VF... Um, oh, what was it called? The VF-1J from uh, Macross Do You Remember Love. Um, so the, the four Revoltex I own are, and of course, the Death Mask from Darksiders 2, which I already reviewed the Collector's Pack for. Um, let's see what else we got. Two figures from Giorgio Rosa Cobra, Cobra Commander, and of course, Destro that I got from Matt, Time Lord. Um, the figure of Jackie Estacado from The Darkness, which, it's not a great figure, but I honestly think it's fine. And two figures that are of the, uh, Masamune Shiro PVC Collector's set, whatever. Um, and of course, hang on, just taking a step back, really is the, the, the other wall of my room, which, which of course, this picture of Megatron, and this picture of Optimus Prime, which I had framed many years ago, and I had originally in my, um, in my other room, which you might have seen or not, but these two, those two figures are really the only, really, I think the only big Transformers pictures that I have that are framed which actually look nicer here than they did in my previous room and of course here is a painting well it's not really a painting but it's a canvas of um, really an image that I found off of Google that I got for Christmas and really it's a gorgeous canvas you, you can't go wrong with it um, here nothing really that special it's just the desk the laptop currently on I haven't got a computer as of yet but at the moment the laptop really does its job um, just a mess. The desk is always a mess, so that's really, that's all you can really say about that. And over here, as well, is my only source of entertainment area, as it is. And, of course, a glass cabinet, which is where, um, just quickly getting onto this quickly, is where I keep a majority of my books, my other bit, my PC games, um, a lot of books, as you can see, books which I still have yet to go through. Um, Lord of the Rings Extended Edition, which has a great, um, great set of uh, great trilogy movies, and this area down here, where is the majority of the Transformers DVDs, comics, and CDs that I own, which is a nice setup, I think. And here, nothing really that special. 
But moving on. Um, this area really is pretty much the area where I play my video games as well as watch my movies. And as you can probably already see at the moment, I'm currently watching... Uh, uh, going through the first season of Deadwood. A really good series. It's a shame that um, that series really got cancelled way before it was just getting good. But yeah, this area really is where I keep my consoles and my television as well as my DVD player. You can you can also see as well that I have um, quite a lot of consoles actually. I have the PS3, uh, PS1, the chip PS1 that I got from Bob Holster, and two PS2s, funnily enough. Um, blah, 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 let's see, the, it's hard to really differentiate one from the other because they, they look the same, but one of them is the one that I've had for quite a long, long time, and the second one is a Japanese PS2 that I actually got from, um, he's not on, uh, YouTube anymore, but he, uh, his name is Neil, uh, Team Decepticon, so thanks again, Neil, if you're watching this video, you will, you will know that I like, I love the Japanese PS2 that I bought from you, so this... That's pretty much the cut the area where I keep all my consoles. And no controllers, which of course the if you just saw the very beginning of the video is one of the boxes in there contains my controllers and memory cards. It feels weird for me to use memory cards in this day and age, but whatever. Um what else? Uh the boxes of movies that I own, which again I will not go through each and every single one of them, but this is pretty much where all of my movies are kept in boxes. Um at some point, I will go through each and every single one of these boxes and collection videos that I do. But really, that's all I can really say about each and every one of these boxes is where I keep all my movies and a few that are already sticking out. And finally, over here is really the wardrobe. The boring wardrobe, in which I stuck a couple of posters on to make it look a bit more interesting. Over here, we have poster from The Darkness, or The Darkness 2. Um... Well, the, yeah, these two posters, um, from uh, Jackie Staccato from the video game The Darkness, or based off of a comic, and here is, you can see it quite badly, because it's actually quite creased, is a picture of, it's a poster of Bonnie McFarlane from the video game Red Dead Redemption. Um, it's a great game, if you haven't played it, it's really, really good. And down here, really, is where the anime posters are kept. Um, over here is a poster of Anna and Yuni from New Dominion Tank Police. As well as the poster from Ghost in the Shell. And over here is the poster of Millennium Mattress. And my favourite movie, Ninja Scroll. And at the bottom, Macross 2, Lovers Again. I don't care what anybody says, I have a lot of... I have. I really want... I like this, uh, this um, entry in the Macross series. Because it's really the one that... Um, that kind of really got me started off a little bit before I really got, um, got a little bit exposed to any other part in that series, but it's good for what it is. It's not perfect, but I think you really manage just to get the job done. So, uh, but at some point, I will do a review on that movie, but for now, I have the poster. I like it. If you don't like it, fair enough. So, um, wrapping this up, that's pretty much the tour of my room, and just getting away from the light a little bit. Anyway, yeah. That's the tour of my room. It's, sorry that it's nothing really that special, but really, it's got everything that I need in regards to the comforts of home. And it's something that I really wanted to get out of the way now. This this new room is very comfortable, very roomy. And it really, it's, it's actually quite a nice room. So I don't know what more you can say about that. Other than that though, this room really hasn't got anything majorly special to really feature. Except for just everything that I have just covered over. And this video is kind of really dragging on a little bit now. So um, um, just to end this quickly, I have uh, a lot of stuff. If you can probably already tell from the collection behind me. Um, really, I've, I've, I've got quite a lot of stuff. I really shouldn't have a lot of stuff, but really, what more can you do? Um, so really, this room is as it is. It's a nice, comfortable room with a nice collection of various different shits. Um, I have a lot of crap. Can you tell? Anyway, dragging this on a little bit too long now. That's pretty much the tour of my, of this room at the moment. Yeah, oh, 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 gradually over time, it will kind of really uh, change and become a bit different. Especially the posters. Which, yeah, the posters over there. But um, other than that, though, that's really all I can say about the room. That's um, that's it, in case you're interested in really wanting to know more about this room and where everything is. So, anyway, that's been, that's been it for me. This has been the, the tour of this whole room, and I'm Scott Goldman Farrell. I'll get back to um, doing reviews again. Well, 
Uh, uh, okay, I will get back to doing reviews again, but for the moment, I will. I just wanted to get this video out, as well as the video that I said I was going to do, which I would come back, which I would do when I got back from auto assembly. That's in the works, so keep an eye out for that. Hopefully, not too soon. But for the moment, that's really all I can do. So I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna switch this off now because this is probably getting a little bit nauseating looking at my face close up. But anyway, there you go. Um, this has been the tour of the room, and I'm Scott Gorman Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank. Uh, take care. See you all soon. Bye.